The Gambia listen, officially the Republic of the Gambia, is a country in West Africa that is almost entirely surrounded by Senegal with the exception of its western coastline along the Atlantic Ocean. It is the smallest country within mainland Africa. The Gambia is situated on either side of the Gambia River, the nation's namesake, which flows through the center of the Gambia and empties into the Atlantic Ocean. Its area is 10,689 square kilometers (4,127 square miles) with a population of 1,857,181 as of the April 2013 census. Banjul is the Gambian capital, and the largest cities are Sarakunda and Brakama. The Gambia shares historical roots with many other West African nations in the slave trade, which was the key factor in the placing and keeping of a colony on the Gambia River, first by the Portuguese, during which era it was known as a Gambia. Later, on 25 May 1765, the Gambia was made a part of the British Empire when the government formally assumed control, establishing the province of Senegambia. In 1965, the Gambia gained independence under the leadership of Dada Jawara, who ruled until Yahya Jama seized power in a bloodless 1994 coup. Adama Barrow became the Gambia's third president in January 2017, after defeating Jama in December 2016 elections. Jama initially accepted the results, then refused to accept them, which triggered a constitutional crisis and military intervention by the Economic Community of West African States, resulting in his exile. The Gambia's economy is dominated by farming, fishing, and, especially, tourism. In 2015, 48.6% of the population lived in poverty. In rural areas poverty is even more widespread with a higher proportion of the population being poor almost 70%. Topic: Etymology. Topic: The name Gambia is derived from the Mandinka term Cambra Kamba, meaning Gambia River. According to the CIA World Factbook, the U.S. Department of State, the Times Comprehensive Atlas of the World and the Permanent Committee on Geographical Names for British Official Use, the Gambia is one of only two countries whose self-standing short name for official use should begin with the word, the, the other one being the Bahamas. Upon independence in 1965, the country used the name the Gambia. Following the proclamation of a republic in 1970, the long-form name of the country became Republic of the Gambia. The administration of Yahya Jama changed the long-form name to Islamic Republic of the Gambia in December 2015. On 29 January 2017 the new president Adama Barrow said the country's name will go back to Republic of the Gambia. History Arab traders provided the first written accounts of the Gambia area in the 9th and 10th centuries. During the 10th century, Muslim merchants and scholars established communities in several West African commercial centers. Both groups established trans-Saharan trade routes, leading to a large export trade of local people as slaves, also gold and ivory, as well as imports of manufactured goods. By the 11th or 12th century, the rulers of kingdoms such as Takrur, a monarchy centered on the Senegal River just to the north, ancient Ghana and Gao had converted to Islam and had appointed to their courts Muslims who were literate in the Arabic language. At the beginning of the 14th century, most of what is today called the Gambia was part of the Mali Empire. The Portuguese reached this area by sea in the mid-15th century, and began to dominate overseas trade. In 1588, the claimant to the Portuguese throne, Antonio, prior of Crato, sold exclusive trade rights on the Gambia River to English merchants. Letters patent from Queen Elizabeth I confirmed the grant. In 1618, King James I of England granted a charter to an English company for trade with the Gambia and the Gold Coast now Ghana. Between 1651 and 1661, some parts of the Gambia were under the rule of the Duchy of Courland and Semigalia belonging to Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth—modern-day Latvia—and were bought by Prince Jacob Kettler. During the late 17th century and throughout the 18th century, the British Empire and the French Empire struggled continually for political and commercial supremacy in the regions of the Senegal River and the Gambia River. The British Empire occupied the Gambia when an expedition led by Augustus Keppel landed there following the capture of Senegal in 1758. 
The 1783 First Treaty of Versailles gave Great Britain possession of the Gambia River, but the French retained a tiny enclave at Albreda on the river's north bank. This was finally ceded to the United Kingdom in 1856. As many as three million people may have been taken as slaves from this general region during the three centuries that the transatlantic slave trade operated. It is not known how many people were taken as slaves by intertribal wars or Muslim traders before the transatlantic slave trade began. Most of those taken were sold by other Africans to Europeans, some were prisoners of intertribal wars, some were victims sold because of unpaid debts, and many others were simply victims of kidnapping. Traders initially sent people to Europe to work as servants until the market for labor expanded in the West Indies and North America in the 18th century. In 1807, the United Kingdom abolished the slave trade throughout its empire. It also tried, unsuccessfully, to end the slave trade in the Gambia. Slave ships intercepted by the Royal Navy's West Africa Squadron in the Atlantic were also returned to the Gambia, with people who had been slaves released on McCarthy Island far up the Gambia River where they were expected to establish new lives. The British established the military post of Bathurst in 1816. <laughs> Gambia Colony and Protectorate In the ensuing years, Banjul was at times under the jurisdiction of the British Governor-General in Sierra Leone. In 1888, the Gambia became a separate colony. An agreement with the French Republic in 1889 established the present boundaries. The Gambia became a British Crown colony called British Gambia, divided for administrative purposes into the colony city of Banjul and the surrounding area and the protectorate remainder of the territory. The Gambia received its own executive and legislative councils in 1901, and it gradually progressed toward self-government. Slavery was abolished in 1906 and following a brief conflict between the British colonial forces and indigenous Gambians, British colonial authority was firmly established. During World War II, some soldiers fought with the Allies of World War II. Though these soldiers fought mostly in Burma, some died closer to home and a Commonwealth War Graves Commission cemetery is in Fahara close to Banjul. Banjul contained an airstrip for the U.S. Army Air Forces and a port of call for Allied naval convoys. After World War II, the pace of constitutional reform increased. Following general elections in 1962, the United Kingdom granted full internal self-governance in the following year. Topic: Post Independence 1965 present. Topic: The Gambia achieved independence on the 18th of February 1965 as a constitutional monarchy within the Commonwealth, with Elizabeth II as Queen of the Gambia, represented by the Governor General. Shortly thereafter, the national government held a referendum proposing that the country become a republic. This referendum failed to receive the two-thirds majority required to amend the constitution, but the results won widespread attention abroad as testimony to the Gambia's observance of secret balloting, honest elections, civil rights, and liberties. On the 24th of April 1970, the Gambia became a republic within the Commonwealth following a second referendum. Prime Minister Sir Dada Kairaba Jawara assumed the office of president, an executive post, combining the offices of head of state and head of government. President Sir Dada Jawara was re-elected five times. An attempted coup on 29 July 1981 followed a weakening of the economy and allegations of corruption against leading politicians. The coup attempt occurred while President Jawara was visiting London and was carried out by the leftist National Revolutionary Council, composed of Kukoi Samba Sanyang. S Socialist and Revolutionary Labour Party SRLP and elements of the field force a paramilitary force which constituted the bulk of the country S armed forces president Jawara requested military aid from Senegal which deployed 400 troops to the Gambia on the 31st of July by the 6th of August some 2700 Senegalese troops had been deployed defeating the rebel force between 500 and 800 people were killed during the coup and the ensuing violence. In 1982, in the aftermath of the 1981 attempted coup, Senegal and the Gambia signed a Treaty of Confederation. The Senegambia Confederation aimed to combine the armed forces of the two states and to unify their economies and currencies. 
After just seven years, the Gambia permanently withdrew from the Confederation in 1989. In 1994, the Armed Forces Provisional Ruling Council deposed the Jawara government and banned opposition political activity. Lieutenant Yahya Ajj. Jama, chairman of the AFPRC, became head of state. Jama was just 29 years old at the time of the coup. The AFPRC announced a transition plan for return to democratic civilian government. The Provisional Independent Electoral Commission was established in 1996 to conduct national elections and transformed into the Independent Electoral Commission in 1997 and became responsible for registration of voters and for the conduct of elections and referendums. In late 2001 and early 2002, the Gambia completed a full cycle of presidential, legislative, and local elections, which foreign observers deemed free, fair, and transparent, albeit with some shortcomings. President Yahya Jama, who was elected to continue in the position he had assumed during the coup, took the oath of office again on 21 December 2001. Jama's Alliance for Patriotic Reorientation and Construction maintained its strong majority in the National Assembly, particularly after the main opposition United Democratic Party boycotted the legislative elections. It has participated in elections since, however. On 2 October 2013, the Gambian Interior Minister announced that the Gambia would leave the Commonwealth with immediate effect, ending 48 years of membership of the organization. The Gambian government said it had "...decided that the Gambia will never be a member of any neo-colonial institution and will never be a party to any institution that represents an extension of colonialism." Incumbent President Jama faced opposition leaders Adama Barrow from the Independent Coalition of Parties and Mama Kanda from the Gambia Democratic Congress Party in the December 2016 presidential elections. The Gambia sentenced main opposition leader and human rights advocate Usainu Darbo to three years in prison in July 2016, disqualifying him from running in the presidential election. Following the 1 December 2016 elections, the Elections Commission declared Adama Barrow the winner of the presidential election. Jama, who had ruled for 22 years, first announced he would step down after losing the 2016 election before declaring the results void and calling for a new vote, sparking a constitutional crisis and leading to an invasion by an ECOWAS coalition. On 20 January 2017, Jama announced that he had agreed to step down and would leave the country. On 14 February 2017, the Gambia began the process of returning to its membership of the Commonwealth and formally presented its application to rejoin to Secretary General Patricia Scotland on of January 2018. Boris Johnson, who became the first British Foreign Secretary to visit the Gambia since the country gained independence in 1965, announced that the British government welcomed the Gambia's return to the Commonwealth. The Gambia officially rejoined the Commonwealth on 8 February 2018. Geography <inaudible> 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 The Gambia is a very small and narrow country whose borders mirror the meandering Gambia River. It lies between latitudes 13 and 14 degrees north, and longitudes 13 and 17 degrees west. The Gambia is less than 50 kilometers 31 miles wide at its widest point with a total area of 11,295 square kilometers 4,361 square miles. About 1300 square kilometers, 500 square miles, 11.5% of the Gambia's area are covered by water. It is the smallest country on the African mainland. In comparative terms, the Gambia has a total area slightly less than that of the island of Jamaica. Senegal surrounds the Gambia on three sides, with 80 kilometers, 50 miles of coastline on the Atlantic Ocean marking its western extremity. The present boundaries were defined in 1889 after an agreement between the United Kingdom and France. During the negotiations between the French and the British in Paris, the French initially gave the British around 200 miles, 320 kilometers of the Gambia River to control. Starting with the placement of boundary markers in 1891, it took nearly 15 years after the Paris meetings to determine the final borders of the Gambia. The resulting series of straight lines and arcs gave the British control of areas about 10 miles 16 km north and south of the Gambia River. <laughs> Climate 
Gambia has a tropical climate. A hot and rainy season normally lasts from June until November, but from then until May, cooler temperatures predominate, with less precipitation. The climate in the Gambia closely resembles that of neighbouring Senegal, of southern Mali, and of the northern part of Benin. Politics and government the Gambia gained independence from the United Kingdom on 18 February 1965. From 1965 to 1994, the country was ostensibly a multi-party liberal democracy. It was ruled by Dada Jawara and his People's Progressive Party However, the country never experienced political turnover during this period and its commitment to succession by the ballot box was never tested. In 1994, a military coup propelled a commission of military officers to power, known as the Armed Forces Provisional Ruling Council After two years of direct rule, a new constitution was written and in 1996, the leader of the AFPRC, Yahya Jama, was elected as president. He ruled in an authoritarian style until the 2016 election, which was won by Adama Barrow, backed by a coalition of opposition parties. Topic: Political history. Topic: During the Jawara era, there were initially four political parties: the PPP, the United Party (UP), the Democratic Party (DP), and the Muslim Congress Party (MCP). The 1960 constitution had established a House of Representatives, and in the 1960 election, no party won a majority of seats. However, in 1961 the British governor chose UP leader Pierre Sarrn Gia to serve as the country's first head of government, in the form of a chief minister. This was an unpopular decision, and the 1962 election was notable as parties were able to appeal to ethnic and religious differences across the Gambia. The PPP won a majority, and formed a coalition with the Democratic Congress Alliance a merger of the DP and MCP. They invited the UP to the coalition in 1963, but it left in 1965. The UP was seen as the main opposition party, but it lost power from 1965 to 1970. In 1975, the National Convention Party (NCP) was formed by Sheriff Mustafa Dibba and became the new main opposition party to the PPP's dominance. Both the PPP and NCP were ideologically similar, so in the 1980s a new opposition party emerged, in the form of the Radical Socialist People's Democratic Organization for Independence and Socialism However, between the 1966 and 1992 elections, the PPP was «overwhelmingly dominant» winning between 55% and 70% of the vote in each election and a large majority of seats continually in principle competitive politics existed during the Jawara era however it was stated that there was in reality a one party monopoly of state power centered around the dominant personality of Dada Jawara civil society was limited post independence and opposition parties were weak and at the risk of being declared subversive the opposition did not have equal access to resources, as the business class refused to finance them. The government had control over when they could make public announcements and press briefings, and there were also allegations of vote buying and improprieties in the preparation of the electoral register. A 1991 court challenge by the PDOIS against irregularities on the electoral register in Banjul was dismissed on a technicality. In July 1994, a bloodless military coup d. Atat brought an end to the Jawara era. The Armed Forces Provisional Ruling Council AFPRC, led by Yahya Jama, ruled dictatorially for two years. The council suspended the constitution, banned all political parties, and imposed a dusk-to-dawn curfew on the populace. A transition back to democracy occurred in 1996, and a new constitution was written, though the process was manipulated to benefit Jama. In a 1996 referendum, 70% of voters approved the constitution, and in December 1996 Jama was elected as president. All but PDOIS of the pre coup parties were banned, and former ministers were barred from public office. During Jama's rule, the opposition was again fragmented. An example was the infighting between members of the National Alliance for Democracy and Development that was formed in 2005. 
Jama used the police forces to harass opposition members and parties. Jama was also accused of human rights abuses, especially towards human rights activists, civil society organizations, political opponents, and the media. Their fates included being sent into exile, harassment, arbitrary imprisonment, murder, and forced disappearance. Particular examples include the murder of journalist Data Hydera in 2004, a student massacre at a protest in 2000, public threats to kill human rights defenders in 2009, public threats towards homosexuals in 2013. Furthermore, Jama made threats to the religious freedom of non Muslims, used mercenary judges to weaken the judiciary, and faced numerous accusations of election rigging. In the December 2016 presidential election, Jama was beaten by Adama Barrow, who was backed by a coalition of opposition parties. Jama's initial agreement to step down followed by a change of mind induced a constitutional crisis that culminated in a military intervention by ECOWAS forces in January 2017. Barrow pledged to serve at the head of a three-year transitional government. The Nigerian Centre for Democracy and Development described the challenges facing Barrow as needing to restore citizen's trust and confidence in the public sector. They describe a «fragile peace» with tensions in rural areas between farmers and the larger communities. They also reported on tensions between ethnic groups developing. An example is that in February 2017, 51 supporters of Jama were arrested for harassing supporters of Barrow. Although his election was initially met with enthusiasm, the center notes that this has been dampened by Barrow's initial constitutional faux pas with his vice president, the challenge of inclusion, and high expectations post Jama. Topic: <laughs> Constitution. Topic: the Gambia has had a number of constitutions in its history. The two most significant are the 1970 Constitution, which established the Gambia as a presidential republic, and the 1996 Constitution, which served as a basis for Jama's rule and was kept following Barrow's victory in 2016. Jama manipulated the 1996 constitutional reform process to benefit himself. No reference was made to term limits, indicating Jama's preference to stay in power for an extended period of time. According to the 1996 constitution, the president is the head of state, head of government, and commander-in-chief of the armed forces. Jama and Barrow have also both taken on the role of minister of defense. Presidency <inaudible> 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 The president appoints the vice president and cabinet of ministers and also chairs the cabinet. The office of prime minister was abolished in 1970. Total executive power is vested in the president. They can also appoint five members of the National Assembly, the judges of the superior courts, regional governors, and district chiefs. In terms of the civil service, they can appoint the Public Service Commission, the Ombudsman, and the Independent Electoral Commission. The president is directly elected for five-year terms based on a simple majority of votes. There are no term limits. The constitution is under review as of 2018 and a two-term limit and other changes required to enhance the governance structures are expected. <inaudible> <inaudible> foreign relations the Gambia followed a formal policy of non-alignment throughout most of former President Jawara's tenure. It maintained close relations with the United Kingdom, Senegal, and other African countries. The July 1994 coup strained the Gambia's relationship with Western powers, particularly the United States, which until 2002 suspended most non-humanitarian assistance in accordance with Section 508 of the Foreign Assistance Act. After 1995 President Jama established diplomatic relations with several additional countries, including Libya suspended in 2010, and Cuba. The People's Republic of China cut ties with the Gambia in 1995 after the latter established diplomatic links with Taiwan, and re-established them in 2016. The Gambia plays an active role in international affairs, especially West African and Islamic affairs, although its representation abroad is limited. As a member of the Economic Community of West African States, the Gambia has played an active role in that organization. 
S efforts to resolve the civil wars in Liberia and Sierra Leone and contributed troops to the Community's Ceasefire Monitoring Group in 1990 and ECOMIL in 2003. The Gambia has also sought to mediate disputes in nearby Guinea-Bissau and the neighboring Casamance region of Senegal. The government of the Gambia believed Senegal was complicit in the March 2006 failed coup attempt. This put increasing strains on relations between the Gambia and its neighbor. The subsequent worsening of the human rights situation placed increasing strains on U.S. Gambian relations. The Gambia withdrew from the Commonwealth of Nations on 3 October 2013, with the government stating it had decided that the Gambia will never be a member of any neo colonial institution and will never be a party to any institution that represents an extension of colonialism. Under the new president, the Gambia has begun the process of returning to its status as a Commonwealth Republic with the support of the British government, formally presenting its application to re-join the Commonwealth of Nations to Secretary General Patricia Scotland on the 22nd of January 2018. The Gambia returned to its status as a Commonwealth Republic on the 8th of February 2018. Topic: <laughs> List of international organization memberships. Topic. Commonwealth of Nations Economic Community of West African States ECOWAS. Organization of Islamic Cooperation United Nations African Union Topic. Military Topic. The Gambia Armed Forces GAF was created in 1985 as a stipulation of the Senegambia Confederation, a political union between the Gambia and Senegal. It originally consisted of the Gambia National Army GNA, trained by the British, and Gambia National Gendarmerie GNG, trained by the Senegalese. The GNG was merged into the police in 1992, and in 1997 JAMA created a Gambia Navy GN. Attempts to create a Gambia Air Force in the mid-2000s ultimately fell through. In 2008, JAMA created a National Republican Guard, composed of Special Forces units. The GNA has a strength of roughly 900, in two infantry battalions and an engineering company. It makes use of Ferret and M8 Greyhound armored cars. The GN is equipped with patrol vessels, and Taiwan donated a number of new vessels to the force in 2013. Since the GAF was formed in 1985, it has been active in UN and African Union peacekeeping missions. It has been classed as a Tier 2 peacekeeping contributor and was described by the Center on International Cooperation as a regional leader in peacekeeping. It dispatched soldiers to Liberia as part of ECOMOG from 1990 to 1991, during which two Gambian soldiers were killed. It has since contributed troops to ECOMIL, UNMIL, and UNAMID. Responsibility for the military has rested directly with the president since JAMA seized power at the head of a bloodless military coup in 1994. JAMA also created the role of Chief of the Defense Staff, who is the senior military officer responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the Gambia Armed Forces. Between 1958 and 1985, the Gambia did not have a military, but the Gambia Field Force existed as a paramilitary wing of the police. The military tradition of the Gambia can be traced to the Gambia Regiment of the British Army, that existed from 1901 to 1958 and fought in World War I and World War II. The Gambia Armed Forces is and has been the recipient of a number of equipment and training agreements with other countries. In 1992, a contingent of Nigerian soldiers helped lead the GNA. Between 1991 and 2005, the Turkish Armed Forces helped train Gambian soldiers. It has also hosted British and United States training teams from the Royal Gibraltar Regiment and U.S. AFRICOM. Administrative divisions The Gambia is divided into eight local government areas, including the national capital, Banjul, which is classified as a city. The divisions of the Gambia were created by the Independent Electoral Commission in accordance to Article 192 of the National Constitution. The local government areas are further subdivided 2013 into 43 districts. Of these, Kanifeng and Combo St. Mary which shares Brakama as a capital with the Brakama local government area are effectively part of the Greater Banjul area. 
Topic: Economy. Topic: the Gambia has a liberal, market-based economy characterized by traditional subsistence agriculture, a historic reliance on groundnuts peanuts for export earnings, a re-export trade built up around its ocean port, low import duties, minimal administrative procedures, a fluctuating exchange rate with no exchange controls, and a significant tourism industry. The World Bank pegged Gambian GDP for 2011 at $898 million. The International Monetary Fund put it at $977 million for 2011. From 2006 to 2012, the Gambian economy grew annually at a pace of 5 to 6% of GDP. Agriculture accounts for roughly 30% of gross domestic product GDP and employs about 70% of the labor force. Within agriculture, peanut production accounts for 6.9% of GDP, other crops 8.3%, livestock 5.3%, fishing 1.8% and forestry 0.5%. Industry accounts for about 8% of GDP and services around 58%. The limited amount of manufacturing is primarily agricultural based e.g., peanut processing, bakeries, a brewery, and a tannery. Other manufacturing activities include soap, soft drinks, and clothing. Previously, the United Kingdom and other EU countries constituted the major Gambian export markets. However, in recent years Senegal, the United States, and Japan have become significant trade partners of the Gambia. In Africa, Senegal represented the biggest trade partner of the Gambia in 2007, which is a defining contrast to previous years that had Guinea-Bissau and Ghana as equally important trade partners. Globally, Denmark, the United States, and China have become important source countries for Gambian imports. The UK, Germany, Ivory Coast, and the Netherlands also provide a fair share of Gambian imports. The Gambian trade deficit for 2007 was $331 million. In May 2009, 12 commercial banks existed in the Gambia, including one Islamic bank. The oldest of these, Standard Chartered Bank, dates its presence back to the entry in 1894 of what shortly thereafter became Bank of British West Africa. In 2005, the Swiss-based banking group International Commercial Bank established a subsidiary and now has four branches in the country. In 2007, Nigeria's Access Bank established a subsidiary that now has four branches in the country. In addition to its head office, the bank has pledged to open four more. In May 2009, the Lebanese Canadian Bank opened a subsidiary called Prime Bank. Topic: Society. The urbanization rate in 2011 was 57.3%. Provisional figures from the 2003 census show that the gap between the urban and rural populations is narrowing as more areas are declared urban. While urban migration, development projects, and modernization are bringing more Gambians into contact with Western habits and values, indigenous forms of dress and celebration and the traditional emphasis on the extended family remain integral parts of everyday life. The UNDP's Human Development Report for 2010 ranks the Gambia 151st out of 169 countries on its Human Development Index, putting it in the low human development category. This index compares life expectancy, years of schooling, gross national income (GNI) per capita and some other factors. The total fertility rate (TFR) was estimated at 3.98 children, woman in 2013. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Ethnic groups. Topic: A variety of ethnic groups live in the Gambia, each preserving its own language and traditions. The Mandinka ethnicity is the largest, followed by the Fula, Wolof, Jola, Karoninka, Sarahul, Jahanka, Surers, Manjago, Bambara, Aku Marabo, and others. The Creo people, locally known as Akis, constitute one of the smallest ethnic minorities in the Gambia. They are descendants of the Sierra Leone Creole people and have been traditionally concentrated in the capital. The roughly 3,500 non-African residents include Europeans and families of Lebanese origin 0.23% of the total population. Most of the European minority is British, although many of the British left after independence. Languages <inaudible> 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 
English is the official language of the Gambia. Other languages are Mandinka, Wolof, Fula, Surer, Creo, Jola and other indigenous vernaculars. Owing to the country's geographical setting, knowledge of French an official language in much of West Africa is relatively widespread. Education <inaudible> 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 The constitution mandates free and compulsory primary education in the Gambia. Lack of resources and educational infrastructure has made implementation of this difficult. In 1995, the gross primary enrollment rate was 77.1% and the net primary enrollment rate was 64.7%. School fees long prevented many children from attending school, but in February 1998, President Jama ordered the termination of fees for the first six years of schooling. Girls make up about 52% of primary school pupils. The figure may be lower for girls in rural areas, where cultural factors and poverty prevent parents from sending girls to school. Approximately 20% of school-age children attend Quranic schools. Health Public expenditure was at 1.8% of the GDP in 2004, whereas private expenditure was at 5.0%. There were 11 physicians per 100,000 persons in the early 2000s. Life expectancy at birth was at 59.9 for females in 2005 and for males at 57.7. ACCORDING to the World Health Organization in 2005, an estimated 78.3% of Gambian girls and women have suffered female genital mutilation. The 2010 maternal mortality rate per 100,000 births for Gambia is 400. This is compared with 281.3 in 2008 and 628.5 in 1990. The under 5 mortality rate, per 1,000 births, is 106 and the neonatal mortality, as a percentage of under 5 mortality, is 31. In Gambia, the number of midwives per 1,000 live births is 5 and the lifetime risk of death for pregnant women is 1 in 49. In October 2012, it was reported that the Gambia had made significant improvements in polio, measles immunization, and the PCV7 vaccine. The Gambia was certified as polio free in 2004. The Gambia EPI program is one of the best in the World Health Organization African region, Thomas Sukwa, a representative of the WHO, said, according to the Foroya newspaper. It is indeed gratifying to note that the government of the Gambia remains committed to the Global Polio Eradication Initiative." According to Vaccine News Daily, The Gambia is tied for third place in Africa for measles immunization among one-year-old children. The Gambia is tied for fourth place in the world for the DTP3 immunization for one-year-old children. The Gambia is ranked second in Africa for feverish children under the age of five who received anti-malarial treatment, according to Trading Economics." A group called Power Up Gambia operates in the Gambia to provide solar power technology to health care facilities, ensuring greater access to electricity. Recently, Riders for Health, an international aid group focused on sub-Saharan countries in Africa, was noted for providing enough health care vehicles for the entire country. Riders for Health manage and maintain vehicles for the government. The initiative addresses a major barrier to universal health care—transport—and allows health workers to visit three times as many villages every week. Religion Article 25 of the Constitution protects the rights of citizens to practice any religion that they choose. In December 2015, Reuters reported that the Gambia was declared to be an Islamic state by the country's president, Yahya Jama. Islam is practiced by 95% of the country's population. The majority of the Muslims in the Gambia adhere to Sunni laws and traditions, while large concentrations follow the Ahmadiyya tradition. Virtually all commercial life in the Gambia comes to a standstill during major Muslim holidays, including Eid al Adha and Eid al Fitr. Most Muslims in the Gambia follow the Maliki school of jurisprudence. Also, a Shiite Muslim community exists in the Gambia, mainly from Lebanese and other Arab immigrants to the region. The Christian community represents about 4% of the population. 
Residing in the western and the southern parts of the Gambia, most of the Christian community identifies themselves as Roman Catholic. However, smaller Christian groups are present, such as Anglicans, Methodists, Baptists, Seventh day Adventists, Jehovah's Witnesses, and small evangelical denominations. It is unclear to what extent indigenous beliefs, such as the Sura religion, continue to be practiced. Sura religion encompasses cosmology and a belief in a supreme deity called Rug. Some of its religious festivals include the Xoy, Mbasa, and Rando Randi. Each year, adherents to Sura religion make the annual pilgrimage to Sine in Senegal for the XOY divination ceremony. Sura religion also has a rather significant imprint on Senegambian Muslim society in that all Senegambian Muslim festivals such as Tobaski, Gamo, Korida, and Wari Kor are loanwords from the Sura religion as they were ancient Sura festivals. Like the Surahs, the Jola people also have their own religious customs. One of the major religious ceremonies of the Jolas is the Bokout. Due to a small amount of immigrants from South Asia, Hindus and followers of the Baha'i Faith are also present. However, the vast majority of South Asian immigrants are Muslim. Culture Although the Gambia is the smallest country on mainland Africa, its culture is the product of very diverse influences. The national borders outline a narrow strip on either side of the River Gambia, a body of water that has played a vital part in the nation's destiny and is known locally simply as the river. Without natural barriers, the Gambia has become home to most of the ethnic groups that are present throughout Western Africa, especially those in Senegal. Europeans also figure prominently in Gambian history because the River Gambia is navigable deep into the continent, a geographic feature that made this area one of the most profitable sites for the slave trade from the 15th through the 17th centuries. It also made it strategic to the halt of this trade once it was outlawed in the 19th century. Some of this history was popularized in the Alex Haley book and TV series Roots, which was set in the Gambia. Topic: Music. The music of the Gambia is closely linked musically with that of its neighbour, Senegal, which surrounds its inland frontiers completely. It fuses popular Western music and dance, with subar, the traditional drumming and dance music of the Wolof and Surer people. Cuisine <coughs> 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 The cuisine of the Gambia includes peanuts, rice, fish, meat, onions, tomatoes, cassava, chili peppers and oysters from the river Gambia that are harvested by women. In particular, yassa and domoda curries are popular with locals and tourists. Media Critics have accused the government of restricting free speech. A law passed in 2002 created a commission with the power to issue licenses and imprison journalists. In 2004, additional legislation allowed prison sentences for libel and slander and cancelled all print and broadcasting licenses, forcing media groups to re register at five times the original cost. Three Gambian journalists have been arrested since the coup attempt. It has been suggested that they were imprisoned for criticizing the government's economic policy, or for stating that a former interior minister and security chief was among the plotters. Newspaper editor Data Hydera was shot to death under unexplained circumstances, days after the 2004 legislation took effect. Licensing fees are high for newspapers and radio stations, and the only nationwide stations are tightly controlled by the government. Reporters Without Borders has accused. President Yahya Jama's police state of using murder, arson, unlawful arrest, and death threats against journalists. In December 2010, Musa Sadakan, former editor of the independent newspaper, was awarded $200,000 by the ECOWAS court in Abuja, Nigeria. The court found the government of the Gambia guilty of torture while he was detained without trial at the National Intelligence Agency. Apparently, he was suspected of knowing about the 2006 failed coup. Sports As in neighbouring Senegal, the national and most popular sport in Gambia is wrestling. Association football and basketball are also popular. 
Football in the Gambia is administered by the Gambia Football Federation, who are affiliated to both FIFA and CAF. The GFA runs league football in the Gambia, including top division GFA League First Division, as well as the Gambia national football team. Nicknamed, the Scorpions, the national side have never qualified for either the FIFA World Cup or the Africa Cup of Nations finals at senior levels. They play at Independence Stadium. The Gambia won two CAFU 17 championships one in 2005 when the country hosted, and 2009 in Algeria automatically qualifying for FIFA U-17 World Cup in Peru 2005 and Nigeria 2009 respectively. The U-20 also qualified for FIFA U-20 2007 in Canada. The female U-17 also competed in FIFA U-17 World Cup 2012 in Azerbaijan. See also Topic Outline of the Gambia Index of Gambia related articles Topic References Topic Topic References Topic External links Topic. Government State House and Office of the President General Information Gambia Guide – Comprehensive Information Gambia Daily News – Daily news from the Gambia through various media sources The Gambia – A comprehensive website about the Gambia. The Gambia. The World Factbook. Central Intelligence Agency. The Gambia from UCB Libraries GovPubs The Gambia at Curlie The Gambia from the BBC News Wikimedia Atlas of the Gambia Geographic data related to the Gambia at OpenStreetMap Key development forecasts for the Gambia from International Futures Tourism Visit the Gambia, the official website of the Gambia Tourism Board. Birdwatching in the Gambia – website about birdwatching in the Gambia including photo galleries of Gambian birds Tragambia 2011 Trade Summary Statistics <laughs>